Bezier curves have been a real great addition to Moho. And here's the thing. Before, in Anime Studio, if you wanted to add points to a shape, it would distort the shape. Here's an example. Here's a circle. I want to add some points to the circle. So let me add one. Ugh. 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 Now I've got to put that all back together and move it around. So let's undo that. Back to our circle. And I am going to, I'm using, of course, the add point tool. I'm going to turn on, in my command bar, show Bezier handles. You can tell it's active because now there's a little orange line around it. Right next to it is another little box with a lock in it. And right now it's not active. And if I click, I get the same effect. But if I turn that on, that's lock Bezier. It locks the Bezier positions of the existing points as much as possible. And I click there, I click there, I click there, I click there. And now I've added these points and I haven't distorted my circle. But you can see that I can now edit them as I want. If the lock Bezier tool in the command bar is grayed out, that is because you have also turned off show Bezier handles. See, that's grayed out, can't click it. Click it, it's available to turn on and off. There are times when you want to be able to see the paths and points of a vector layer when you're not actually on that layer. For instance, if you're on the bone layer, you want to be able to align your bone to some particular points. But the minute you go to the bone layer, you can't see those points anymore. And so you think there must be a way to do that. And there is. Uh, here's an example of an old style vector animation arm. And there's a rounded elbow hidden away so that when the arm rotates, it rotates smoothly or it should. And here's what's happening right now. That uh, does not look good in the slightest. It's totally broken. Let me show you what should be happening. I'm going to hide the lower arm so we can see. And on the upper arm, that's where this curve is. And really, we want centered between these upper and lower uh, points. We want the tip of the bone and the connecting base of the uh, lower arm bone centered between those two points and also aligned with this uh, point on the tip. And so I go back to my bone layer and that stuff is all gone. Well, I can fix that in my layers panel. And let me move this in a bit. This thing flies off the screen and you'll never see all of it, but I'll right click and there's quick settings and I'll click that and you can see that's quick settings for the upper arm and under details all I have to do is check paths and then at the bottom there's an apply button I'll click you can't see it no matter what I do I can't get it to go onto the screen but there we go I've, I've applied and the paths and now when I go to the bone layer, you can still see the points. So all I have to do now is use my translate bone tool in layer zero to bring that in between those upper and lower points and aligned as best I can with that point on the curve. And then I'll bring that to snap to it. And then I'll stretch that back out and we'll get this back to the way it was. And I can put my view back on on that. And let's see what happens. See, that's way better. I could do a little bit more. There's a little bit of a split there. But that's working really well right there. And so that's how you solve that problem.
Another feature people seem to miss or not use as efficiently as they could is the uh, reset feature for different settings on bones, points, things like that. So uh, let me show you an example of where that might come in handy. We're going to zoom in a little bit on my monkey. And let's say I wanted my monkey to do a bit of a, a take. Uh, you know, the head squashes down, pops up, and pops back. Kind of a surprise thing. So um, I will use the scale bone. I will scale the bone to squash and stretch that head. But, um, you know, once you start squashing and stretching a bone, how do you get it back to be the original scale? And that's what reset's for. So let's take a look. First of all, I've gone into bone constraints and turned on squash and stretch scaling for this head bone, just in case you're wondering. So I'll come out and let's say, let's go to frame four and I'll get my translate bones tool and I'll mouse over this little button and I'll squash that down. And then I'm going to come out maybe three frames and pull it up. And here's where reset gets useful. I'll come out two more. All I have to do to get that head back to its original bone shape is come up into this top uh, control bar, find scale. Right now it's set to 1.0741, normal is one, and just click reset. And there we go. We have um, squashed and stretched the bone and without fear because it's so easy to return it. So here we go. Not the greatest surprise take, but I think that's uh, one of the uh, reasons you'd want to do it. You want to feel free to be able to just um, really mess with your rig to get the effects you want. And if you're worried about moving bones or squashing and stretching them because you're not sure you can get them back, well, that's what reset's for. Uh, I can also, for instance, come out here. I could drag the head down lower on the body like he's really ducking his head into his shoulders just by clicking and dragging that down. And to put it back, I just come back up into the control bar. I find the position and click reset and back it goes. So I can really mess with, um, I can really mess with my bones and, and with the reset, I can put them straight back where they were. Let me come back here and I'll just bring this here blank bone over closer so I can stay zoomed in. And here's another use, a uh, really shortcut, is I want him to blink. So I click blink, and I can come out too. And instead of pulling it back up and thinking, oh, I'll get close, again, I can come to ankle and just click reset. And that's even more useful because I usually design my eyes to go wide so I could actually on the open go a little bit beyond and then come back and reset back down so I can get a kind of little pop to the opening of the eye. So that is uh, how you can use the reset and that also will work on the points. If I want to grab and move a point for some reason then I can come back to position and just hit reset, back it goes. And I can do the same for scaling and angling for that as well. But if I wanted to just grab that whole mess and move it for some reason, I can always just hit reset and then it'll put it back into its original position. So that gives you a lot more freedom to squash, stretch, and just um, just uh, really work with your rigs, really push them to their limit to get that perfect animation of principle squash and stretch and exaggeration.